In January 1942, against the backdrop of World War II, a significant event took place at the luxurious villa in Wannsee, a suburb of Berlin, Germany. The Wannsee Conference, as it has come to be known, was a pivotal meeting of high-ranking Nazi officials chaired by SS uh, Vice Chairman Reinhard Heydrich to enact what was known in Nazi circles as the final solution to the Jewish question. Legalized discrimination against Jews in Germany began immediately after the Nazi seizure of power in January of 1933. This is when Hitler was installed as chancellor. And his ideology brought together the elements of anti-Semitism, racial hygiene, and eugenics and combined them with a pan-Germanism or just huge explosion of a very poor kind of nationalism and that against the backdrop of wanting territorial expansion with the goal of creating more living space for the Germanic people Nazi Germany attempted to not only gain new territory in places such as Poland and the Soviet Union but wanted to get rid of any people they considered substandard most notably people of the Jewish faith, and Slavs or Eastern Europeans of Russian descent rather than Germanic or Nordic descent because they considered them inferior to the Aryan master race. Um, the discrimination against Jews was pretty much legalized from the time that uh, the Nazis took control and consisted of things from being denied access to markets, forbidden to advertise in newspapers, deprived of access to government contracts, uh, ousted uh, from careers such as law, government, even medicine, unless you were specifically treating other Jews or people that the master race considered substandard. These were enacted by uh, what is known as the Nuremberg Laws in 1935, and they also prohibited marriages between Jews and uh, Aryans and also broke down the rights that people that were partially Jewish would have versus fully Jewish people. With the invasion of Poland in 1939, Hitler upticked the amount of violence and discrimination against Jews because not only now was he dealing with the amount of Jewish people and other non-want non-wantable people living in German Germany proper, he was now faced with the millions of Jews that lived in Poland. Anti-Semitism has long been present in Western Europe, and as a result, those that could not migrate to the Middle East did go eastward to get away from the anti-Semitism uh, of the UK, France. Germany, pre-World War I Germanic states, and they ended up settling in some of the Eastern European states, most notably Poland. To start dealing with some of the millions of Jews in Poland, Hitler put together what were known as the Kill Squads, the Eschgruben. They were a special task force that basically rounded up anyone that was suspected of being a Jew or another undesirable and killed them immediately. They dug mass graves or had the condemned dig their mass graves and then basically shot them, allowing them to fall into the graves and then covered them up. But this proved to be, in the Nazi way of thinking, uh, very unpragmatic as it was wasting ammunition, time, wear and tear on equipment, and also putting a huge mental health toll on the soldiers. These are just basic German soldiers being tasked with this. And now these are the way the Nazis looked at these people. It wasn't about them being human and deserving of human rights. It was they, they were wasting precious resources to deal with them. And so by the... Before, just before the Wannsee Conference, 
they had already approximately killed about 65,000 uh, people in this manner in the conquered Polish territory. And in July of 1941, Hermann Goering, the head of the SS, authorized uh, Reinhard Heydrich to prepare and submit a plan for a total solution to the Jewish question, uh, encompassing Jews from both Germany proper and the conquered territory. They were also planning for the Soviet Union to be conquered because as of this moment, their invasion of the Soviet Union, known as Operation Barbarossa, was going very, very well. However, it would not continue to go well and would turn the tide of the war for the Allies. In addition to this, uh, he also just wanted to eliminate anybody that he could from these conquered territories. He was wanting to kill 30 million people uh, to make room for what he considered true German to move into their places. So in addition to the mass extinction of Jews that would be taken out between kill squads and later concentration and extermination camps, he also wanted anyone that was not German to be eliminated, if possible, through the use of starvation, which means that all food stores would be diverted to only German citizens, German military, and German migrants, leaving everyone else to starve. These people were monsters, y'all. Any Jews fit to work would be used essentially as slave labor. They would be deported to these conquered lands to build railroads, roads, and other things needed by the German war machine uh, to be starved while doing it. And as they began to die off, they would just be replaced. And if they managed to survive until everything had happened, they would then be exterminated. And it was this backdrop that the Wannsee Conference took place. On November 29th, 1941, Heydrich sent out invitations to 15 different higher-ups in the Nazi regime. The attendees included represent, representatives from Nazi ministries and agencies, each with a specific role in impl implementing the genocidal plan. Among them were Heydrich himself, SS Major General Otto Hoffmann, SS Major General Heinrich Mueller, SS uh, attendee Karl Eberhardt, SS Senior Colonel Gerhard Kopler, SS Lieutenant Commander uh, Adolf Eichmann, uh, SS Major Rudolf Lange, SS Major Rudolf Lange, and then some civilian members of the German uh, government and Nazi party, George LeBrant, Alfred Mayer, Joseph Bueller, Ronald Fleischmer, uh, an SS Brigadier General Wilhelm Stuckhart, who was but was a civilian representative of the Interior Ministry, uh, another SS man, Eric Newman, was served a civilian position even though he was in the SS. Uh, Undersecretary Wilhelm Kreitzer, Martin Luther, who was an undersecretary of the Foreign Officer Office. These people were slated to decide the fate of millions of people in Europe. Now, between the time that the original invitations were sent out, November 29th, to the or original proposed date of December 9th, Things, didn't, things took a turn for the worst for Germany. Basically, Stalin's Red Army had massed a, both a defensive and offensive stance outside uh, some major cities in the Soviet Union and had started to turn that tide, and basically the German invasion had stalled. In addition, December 7th, 1941, Pearl Harbor occurred and the United States entered the war, pledging not only supplies, munitions, and technologies, but boots on the ground. And all of this had the Nazi government in quite a tizzle. So the meeting was moved from Berlin headquarters to the Wannsee uh, Palace in a suburb of Berlin and actually took place on January 20th, 1942. Basically, after some pleasantries, they sat down at a conference table as if this was a corporate meeting, and Heydrich, a chief architect of the Holocaust, outlined the systematic extermination of Europe's Jews. Uh, the meeting's minutes were meticulously recorded by Adolf Eichmann, laid bare the chilling details of the Nazis' intentions to deport millions of Jews to extermination camps. 
even though the original intention had be to uh, deport Jews to uh, concentration and extermination camps in the areas of the Soviet Union and kill them there. But because uh, the Soviet Union had begun to push Germany back, they decided that that would be sent to Poland. So you had now to deal with the amount of Jews in Poland. All of the discussions pretty much bared around a few things. Logistics, transportation, coordination, and who was supposed to do what, including a lot of back and forth arguing about that's not my job, that's your job, and vice versa. In addition, they basically laid out a list. Eichmann and Reinhard laid out a list showing exactly how many undesirables were populating certain areas of the country. For example, they intended to conquer all of Eastern Europe, so they were basically saying that here's a detailed list of the population, uh, Jewish population of these areas. So, for example, um, there were uh, Latavia had 3,500 Jews, Lithuania 34,000 Jews, Belgium 43,000 Jews, Denmark 5,600 Bulgaria, 48,000. England had 330,000. Finland, 2,300. Ireland had 4,000. Italy, 58,000. Albania, 200. Croatia, 40,000. Portugal, 3,000. Romania, 342,000. Sweden, 8,000. Switzerland, 18,000. Serbia, 10,000. So on and so forth through France, Greece, Netherlands, the Soviet Union, which had 5 million. Ukraine had almost 3 million. Belarus, 446,000. They pretty much intended to conquer all of Europe. The only place that they found was free of Jews was Estonia. And they actually mentioned in the mid, mid minutes that Estonia must have done something right in a very, you know, unironic way. So he basic, uh, Hydrit basically opened the conference with all this information and went over what would happen basically that all that the Warsaw and other ghettos in Poland must be cleared. All of the Jews that had been moved from their homes to these ghettos, must they must first be sent to these extermination camps, such as Birkenau, uh, Auschwitz, Treblinka, and they must be killed. And then new people would be brought in and sent to the same camps, housed in the ghettos if if they would if they would have to be to wait to get into the concentration camps. The decisions made at one to see marked a turning point, accelerating the mass murder of Jews across occupied Europe and how people should be labeled. Basically the situation of people who were half or quarter Jews and Jews married to non Jews became under scrutiny. Under those Nuremberg Laws of 1935, the status had been left deliberately ambiguous, but Heydrich announced that mixed-race peoples of the first degree, that is, persons with two Jewish grandparents, that is, if you have me, who has two Jewish grandparents, I'm essentially half-Jewish, I'm going to be treated as a Jew and killed. The only way I could be saved is if I were married to a non-Jew and had children by that marriage. So if I'm married, if I'm single, I'm dead. If I'm married to a non-Jew or somebody they consider to be a non-Jew but no children, I'm dead. If I have children, I'm okay. And the only other exemption would be is if I did something practically or had some talent or skill that was practically useless to the useful to the right, then I would be spared. But I would also be sterilized to prevent any further breeding if that was the case. And basically anyone that had one Jewish grandparent could be spared, so on and so forth. So basically it specified what the Nuremberg Laws left so vague. And then at the uh, conclusion of the uh, meeting, Heydrich gave orders that all this, these firm instructions were to appear in the minutes, but all members of the party were to receive copies of these minutes, but these minutes were to be destroyed as soon as possible. All four...
uh, all 15 of the members took their received their minutes, and 14 of them did destroy them. But it was uh, 1947 that Martin Luther's copy, uh, number 16 of the ones that were prepared, was found by U.S. Prosecutor Robert Kemper when he was preparing for the trials at Nuremberg. Today, the Wannasee Villa serves as a museum and memorial, a solemn reminder of the horrors perpetrated during the Holocaust. And that, my friends, is the bureaucratic, almost corporate meeting that laid the fate of so many people during World War II. May we never forget the victims of the Holocaust and strive to ensure that such atrocities are never repeated. Until next time, keep on crying.